There's always been a churchyard here at St Philip's, the church that became a cathedral in the town that became a city. 300 years ago, the need for a new burial ground was nearly as pressing as the need for a new place of worship, as it was said that down the hill at St Martin's, the dead were burying the church rather than the church burying the dead. There are thought to be as many as 60,000 burials within the cathedral square. It was closed for interments in the late 1850s, like many churchyards in the country, it was overcrowded and becoming a health risk. After this date, funerals were still held here, but burials took place elsewhere, for example, at Warstone Lane Cemetery in the Jewelry Quarter. From early depictions, we can see that originally the churchyard had been enclosed by a brick wall. However, many of the paths traversing the churchyard follow the same course that they do now. In 1911, the churchyard was remodelled as cathedral gardens and the council introduced seating, formal planting and new trees. During World War II, there was a temporary air raid shelter in the grounds and later in the 20th century, the Heritage Lottery Fund supported the introduction of ornate railings and York stone paths. This churchyard has always been a central meeting place for people and events in Birmingham. In 1918, people gathered here to celebrate the end of the First World War and in 1997, hundreds of floral tributes were laid after the death of Princess Diana, starting around an oak tree planted by the princess years before and spreading out across the square. It is estimated that up to 20,000 people now pass through the churchyard every single day. Funerals conducted at St Philip's are recorded in the parish registers, which are now held in the Library of Birmingham. Family history researchers find such records invaluable. Only a small fraction of these names and dates are recorded for posterity on headstones, vaults and memorials. These stones that remain give us a tantalising and fascinating view of Birmingham's history. So, let's take a closer look. Here's an interesting headstone near to the front door of the cathedral. The inscription reads, In memory of Nanetta Stocker, who departed this life May 4th, 1819, aged 39 years. The smallest woman ever in this kingdom, possessed with every accomplishment, only 33 inches high, a native of Austria. Nanetta was indeed a woman of small stature who performed at numerous fairs all over Europe. She spoke six languages and was an excellent musician and singer. It's thought she passed away whilst performing at the Onion Fair held every year in Aston. Just a few metres from Nanetta's headstone in a prominent position in front of the cathedral is a granite paving slab. It reads Midland Man of the Year Award to the citizens of Birmingham for their steadfastness after the bombings of November the 21st, 1974, presented by Mitchells and Butlers. Both of the pubs that suffered in the bombings, the Mulberry Bush and the Tavern in the Town, were Mitchells and Butlers brewery pubs. And on this rare occasion, the award was presented to the entire city. Just behind us is a striking bronze statue representing Charles Gore. Gore was the first Bishop of Birmingham in 1905. He was a very influential figure and felt strongly that the new Diocese of Birmingham should not waste money on a new cathedral building, but repurpose an existing church. This is how St Philip's Church became a cathedral. The statue is by sculptor Sterling Lee and was installed in 1914 when Gore was still alive. On seeing it, Gore remarked, it is awfully like myself. Moving towards the old joint stock pub, we can see the large and decorative gravestone of Samuel Lines, described simply as an artist. Lines was one of the founders of the Royal Birmingham Society of Artists and he started life drawing classes in the town. 
The story of Lines demonstrates the relationship between art and industry in the growing town of Birmingham. He started as an apprentice japanner, which was a technique for lacquering decorative surfaces on objects, and his interest moved on to fine art. Across the road on Temple Row, Lines's studio can be seen, marked by a blue plaque. In 1821, Lines painted a view from the Dome of St Philip's that shows fields, farmhouses and yards, a far cry from what you see today. Walking towards Colmore Row, we can see the beautifully restored Bellis Vault. Wealthy families purchase large burial vaults and this one has recently been conserved with funds from the family. The second son of John and Elizabeth, George Bellis, went on to found the engineering company Bellis and Morecambe. They made reciprocating engines and compressors and employed large numbers of people at their Leadsome Street Works in Ladywood. Part of this company still operates in the West Midlands today. The inscriptions on the vault paint a sad picture of a family where many children died in infancy. Now walk all the way over to House of Fraser, still commonly known as Rackham's. Right up until 1957, there was a row of Georgian houses here. Look carefully for the distinctive angel statue mounted in the wall in the graveyard railings. This is known as the Angel Fountain. It came from a church called Christ Church, which stood where Victoria Square is today. Christ Church was a daughter church of St Philip's, and it was demolished in 1899. The fountain is used as a kind of shrine today and there are often flowers left here. It also reminds us of a time when clean water was not readily available and fountains were an important source of drinking water. Walk along Temple Row and enter the churchyard by your next available path. Immediately on your right is a truncated Doric column with an inscription on a stone plinth below. This is the Town Hall Memorial. It marks the tragic death of John Heap and William Badger, two Welsh quarrymen who fell to their death whilst working on the construction of the Birmingham Town Hall in 1833. A service is now held here every April honouring those killed or injured by accidents at work. The creation of the Town Hall was brought about by the popularity of the Triennial Music Festivals initially held here at St Philip's from the mid-18th century. Significantly, the fatal accidents of Heap and Badger led to some major changes to legislation for workers' safety in the numerous factory acts of the 19th century. The expanding town of Birmingham was attracting large numbers of new workers in this period. The population grew from 74,000 in 1800 to 522,000 in 1901. Effectively, it increased sevenfold. The churchyard is a central point in the town, both physically and spiritually. As such, it has become an important place for recognising key figures in events. The very large, white Portland stone obelisk is a striking feature. It honours Colonel Frederick Burnaby and stands at over 50 feet high. Burnaby was a traveller and a soldier and stood unsuccessfully as a Conservative parliamentary candidate against Joseph Chamberlain in 1880. Burnaby was an adventurer and an all-round boy's own hero. He was sent to rescue Gordon of Khartoum, travelled across much of Russian Asia on horseback and even crossed the English Channel in a hot air balloon. Moving closer to the cathedral, a simple stone memorial marks the Birmingham pub bombings of the 21st of November 1974, when 21 people were killed and 182 injured. That night has scarred the memory of the city and to date the perpetrators have not been brought to justice. Every year a service is held here in memory of the event. There are many more interesting people commemorated here in the churchyard at Birmingham Cathedral. 
a visitor from Islington who fell from his horse, a fish curer, a gun maker, most of whom would have walked these paths years before us and each with their own story to tell.